chicos. Hola chicos. Bienvenidos a una nueva edición de Ruta 226. Somos el Ministerio Infantil. ¡Ruta! Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Sunday School. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're staying dry. It's been raining a lot, but I hope you've been staying dry. Well, I skipped out on breakfast, so I'm gonna start off the lesson by eating. Here I have my little cookie jar. I know it's not really a jar, but every time we make dessert, we always put it in here. And my mom just made some amazing chocolate chip cookies. So I'm gonna have one for breakfast. Don't, don't do that for breakfast, because you guys can be healthy and all that, but I'm gonna eat a cookie because I'm hungry, okay? All right, it's time to eat my cookie. I am hungry. Hey, where's my cookie? Who took my cookie? <gasps> I bet he did. Where are you? Hey, Gia! Oh, what? Did you eat my cookie? Where's my mom? Mm, where's your mom, Dalia? Where is she? Dalia, did you eat my cookie? No! Go ask Gigi. Mm -hmm, where's Gigi? Where's Gigi? Gigi, where are you? Is she under here? No, she's not under here. Where is she? Where are you? I still think I see her. Gigi! Yeah. Did you eat my cookie? No! <gasps> Gigi ate my cookie! No. All right, so that whole thing was crazy. Giselle turned out to be the one who ate my cookie. Very upset. That was the last cookie too, but I'll just tell my mom to bake me another one. It's okay, it's gonna be okay. But that whole thing kind of reminded me of a Bible story from Genesis in the Garden of Eden with the, with the, two, with the first two humans, Adam and Eve. See, God created the Garden of Eden, he created the humans, and he told them, you can eat from any tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can't eat from that tree. You can eat from anything else except that tree. So, one day, Eve was strolling around the garden, la da la da la da and a serpent came up to her. And, she, and then the serpent said, hey, did God really tell you you shouldn't eat from, the, from that tree? And he was like, yeah, he said, we couldn't even touch it. And then the serpent said, well, if you eat that fruit from that tree, <gasps> great things are gonna happen. And he was like, hmm, okay. So then Eve took the fruit and ate from the tree. And then she gave some to Adam. Then God came around, strolling down the garden. Hey, Adam, where are you? And Adam was like, oh, I'm over here, God. Hi. And then God said, why, asked him, why are you hiding? And then he found out, and then he got asked him, did you eat from the fruit of the tree I told you not to eat? And then Adam said, I only did it because Eve told me to. And then God looked at Eve, and Eve said, I only did it because the serpent told me to. Kind of like the cookies, right? Gio said he hadn't eaten it to go look for his mom. Mom said she hadn't eaten it, go look for Gigi. And then God was very disappointed that they had broken his law, broken his rule. But he was more disappointed that they had lied about it. They kept blaming each other, right? So God banished them from the garden. But that turned into a whole other story. The point of this story was that God set a rule for them that they had to follow and they didn't follow it. I'm curious, have you ever done something bad and whenever they asked you about it, you said, hey, 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 it wasn't me. I know I've done that sometimes. Yeah, and I bet, I bet some of you guys have done it too, right? Or the opposite, someone blamed you of something that you didn't do. But has that ever happened to you? That's happened to me before. Well, whenever we're in those situations, it kind of gets a little tricky, right? Do we say it was me? Or do, or do I get out of trouble, right? Well, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what the situation is. God calls us to do the right thing. So even if you did take that extra cookie or you haven't done your homework, you should fess up and say, yeah, I ate the last cookie. Yeah, I didn't finish my homework. And that's the important part that even though 
you, you know, you did the other thing, it'll be great that you told the truth, okay? So just remember that the next time you get stuck into one of those situations. So before I send you off on the craft, I wanna say a quick prayer for you guys, okay? So close your eyes. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, I pray that you help us do the right thing, no matter, no matter the consequences or no matter what else we do. In your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, so now I have a pretty cool craft for you. So stay tuned because we'll be right back. All right, what's up, guys? I'm here in front of the church garden right here. It's a nice, beautiful day. Now, in today's lesson, we talked about the Garden of Eden in Genesis. We talked about how it was a super beautiful garden. It wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. The temperature was always just, just right. Adam and Eve, they were able to hang out with the animals in peace. It was very, it was very tranquil. It was all good. It was the perfect environment that God had created. Because in fact, in his creation, God said, everything was very good. So for this activity, I want you guys using anything you guys have, finger paint, markers, crayons, colored pencils, paint, anything you have, I want you to try and recreate the Garden of Eden. Now, nobody knows what it looks like. The Bible, the Bible says there were flowers, plants, animals, but no one knows exactly what it looks like. So I want you guys to ima try to imagine it in your head and see what you guys come up with, all right? Using every anything you want. Just uh, use the paper and all the materials you have and try to recreate the Garden of Eden. If you need help, you can ask your parents, your teachers, but you guys, you guys have a pretty good imagination. I think you guys got it, okay? So that's your activity. And I'm not gonna show you the one I drew because I want you guys to try and come up with something yourself, okay? Now, that's the activity. Now, on to the next thing. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing my last year's VBS shirt. Well, today, this Sunday, marks the first day of VBS registration. It's the first day where you guys can go and register for VBS from August. VBS is gonna be August 2 to August 6. And you have the entire month of June to register for it. Now, we're gonna have some cool lessons, some cool games, we're gonna have some cool gizmos. If you guys have been to VBS before, you know what to expect. And the cool thing about this one is that it's gonna be in person, okay? We're not gonna deal with all the Zoom and the virtual stuff like we did last year. Although last year we had a pretty cool VBS. But no, this VBS, we're gonna go all out. It's gonna be in person here at church. So you guys need to go tell your parents to register you, to find one of the leaders, to find myself, Marielli, Maria Celeste, Maida, Catherine, anyone you can find and tell them, hey, how do I register? I need you to register me because I wanna to go to VBS, okay? If you have any other questions, you can ask your teachers right now in class, or you can have your parents call the office. To sign up, all you have to do is go onto the church's website, iglesiasanmateo.org, iglesiasanmateo.org, and the link is gonna be right there. I'm gonna post it in the description in the video. You have the entire month of June to sign up, okay guys? So I hope to see all of you guys there at VBS. The theme is gonna be great. We're gonna talk about, well, I won't tell you guys what we're gonna talk about, but I promise you it's gonna be great. We're gonna have fun and I hope to see you guys there, all right? Bye.